Welcome back. Money Wise now, getting rich isn't too far out of reach. Sure, millennials and young people are riddled with bills. According to a survey from Wells Fargo, 42% of millennials are, quote, overwhelmed with their financial debt. So there are a lot of dark clouds looming, but getting rich isn't too far away either. Herb Scribner is here with five ways young people can get rich now. And I guess we could debate on just what exactly rich is, but let's talk <laughs> about improving our finances. Top of the list for young people. Top of the list is uh, planning for retirement. Um, it's really about you know knowing that the end is in sight and eventually in sight. So you gotta you gotta look at that 401k when you're a little uh, younger and um, you know they say to start investing when you're 25. Start when you're 23. You get that job right out of college. You start in that 401k and uh, you get the money to pile up and you gotta think long term. It'll it'll take it out of check now, but it'll help you out later on. A lot of times we're taught to be conservative. You're saying hey. Take some risks. Yeah, take some risks, you know, um, and that means in two ways. If you're investing, if you're into that, um, you know, you want to take some risks sometimes, you know, maybe it's, uh, it's one you're not sure of, but take the risk. And then also that applies to career goals. You know, if you think, man, you know, I've been doing this job a couple of years, do I want to keep doing it? Maybe you want to step outside the box and try something new, and that could get you uh, a little more money in there and, and uh, help, you get, help you get rich quicker, you know? Or at least you'd be happier. That's true, too. You'd be rich in happiness. Yeah. How about uh, inspiring interest? So this is interesting. This is something that, um, that uh, experts have said is really happening right now, and this is this whole uh, Silicon Valley movement where you have these startups started by young people. Look at Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook and, and those kind of things. That's, you want to get inter interested in something. You want to be inspired. And if you find something that you're really inspired about, um, something you think could inspire others, too, uh, you might be one of those people that start, gets that startup and um, is able to get rich because of that, you know, because of that cool little app you made. or Create some, Apple or something right, like that. Right, create uh, the that next Apple, the next <laughs> Apple. <laughs> All right, yeah. the WikiHow plan. Follow the WikiHow plan. I don't even know what the WikiHow plan is, so enlighten me. All right, the WikiHow plan, this is, very, this is very scientific, but basically you start out, you set a goal for yourself. Okay. I want to be X, you know, I want to be this. And then you, then you say, then from there you start making moves to do that. You get that, you accomplish that goal, and, um, and part of that goal should be how much you want to save, how much you want to get in the end. Um, and then you take 25% of your income, you say, put that away, and then at the same time, you take your current salary and you, apply, you multiply it by how many, how many years you think you have left um, in your life. Most of the time, it's about 30 for a millennial. Yeah. You got to do it by 30 or so. You multiply it by 30, you see what you're worth. And you use that as kind of the benchmark, like, okay, that's what I need to get to in the end. And by taking that 25% of your income you, and saving it over time, you'll get to that goal. Now, a lot of people just stop listening to you right there and they're like, hey, look, I can't take 25% of my income and put it anywhere because right. I need every penny to get through this month. Mm -hmm. So where can those folks start? Yeah, you know, it's, it's really coming down to simple things. I mean, you know, do you really need that, you know, extra Jama juice? Do you need to get that Slim Jim at the Maverick, you know? Like, there are these small things you can cut out to kind of keep, keep going along and keep, um, get to save a couple bucks here and there, and then over time that'll add up, and um, I think that's, that's one of the definite things you can do. You gotta start somewhere. You gotta right? start somewhere, exactly, right. exactly. Herb, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Good to have you here this morning, and you can read much more from Herb on Deseret News, uh, national.deseretnews.com when it comes to Money Wise Matters. More than 80% of Americans profess a belief in God, but Hollywood's been slow to offer content that engages people of faith. A prominent producer who's also a pastor is working to change that. This morning, Bishop T.D. Jakes in Los Angeles on faith and filmmaking. I'm trying to get you to understand how life balances itself. Bishop Jakes is the founder and senior pastor of the Potter's House, a non-denominational mega church in Dallas. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make you understand that God is just. He encourages his followers to use their faith to fuel their dreams. To understand a better sense of priorities as it relates to who they are as believers, but to also use that faith to spread the message of Christ. You're gonna spend the holidays with your grandparents. He's encouraged to see the message of Christ spreading across the big screen. Virgin's putting on his Christmas show. Jake's produced Heaven is for Real and Black Nativity. I got a mouth to feed. And to finally have an opportunity to have equal representation within the Hollywood family is amazing. Jake's is appalled the faith sector is being discussed from a niche market perspective since it serves 140 million consumers. 
And so the more we can scream out and say, hey, we're over here and we will support this kind of film, we have gotten their attention because we have broken records this year in the faith-based arena. In heaven, the slogan... Jakes believes Hollywood may have to override its own skepticism in order to reflect faith on film. I think they're oblivious to those people because they don't live in that environment. At the same time, he realizes faith-based films... It's time to forgive and it's time to come home. ...need to be more inclusive. I'm interested in having a conversation on both sides that you don't divide people into groups and say, this is how you're supposed to act. His latest best-selling book, Instinct, suggests that successful business only emerges when opposite interests find common intersections. Hi. How you doing? The book also shows thank readers you, you how so to much. tap into their God-given intuition. How I've got it, my career, my businesses, my entrepreneurship, and even how to hire people who are instinctive. How much more fulfilled they are and how much more profitable business is when you place people in the area that they are gifted to perform. I'll see you in church. Tonight? Jakes hopes more movie producers will learn to trust their instincts and God and give more faith-based films the green light. As for me and my house, we are going to church. Jake's also produced Sparkle and Winnie, and we wish him well in his future projects. And that's our report this morning on Desert News National Edition. I'm Dave McCann. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next Sunday.